okay i hope it would be little clear now sorry for the inconvenience okay sorry for the inconvenience i just uh, wanted to make sure that there should not be noise but uh, the work is going on and it, now it would be little better okay so let's move on uh, let's move on to the each uh, division within this plant kingdom so plant kingdom is basically divided into phenerogame and cryptogame cryptogame non flowering and phenerogame flowering in this plant you know how you have to read is each divisions or each uh, you know you know subdivisions you need to read their characteristics their examples their important features salient features of those uh, particular organisms why they are classified under these these uh, uh, class you know different uh, you know categories so that you need to or tags up right that you need to really understand uh, is it okay guys let's move forward so when we say algae right algae when we uh, here we will be talking about algae right <clears throat> so within the algae we will be talking about uh, you know chlorophycea members and then uh, phyophycea members and rhodophycea members here we will be uh, we will be having a subdivision of algae based upon their uh, you know uh, you know pigmentation right so how these chlorophycea phyophycea at the same time rhodophycea members are different there was a uh, you know important table work, uh, was given in your ncert textbook that table you need to focus so wherever tables and diagrams are coming in this ncert they are utmost important you should be taking care of care of them okay you need to uh, you know you, sh you should be reading properly so all these three uh, divisions of algae right they are all divided based on their uh, pigments uh, the you know the chlorophyll pigments so if you see this chlorophyll right in uh, previous year in 11th standard uh, botany you would have already learned about this pigmentation and uh, different types of chlorophylls and their absorption spectra right so in this chlorophycea members uh, these members will have chlorophyll a and b and phyophycy members they will have chlorophyll a c and phycoxanthin and uh, rhodophycy members or red algae members they will be having chlorophyll a and d and phycoerythrin so these pigments are utmost important okay the pigments they may give column a and column a pigments column b the divisions in the algae so at that point of time you need to really focus on what uh what aspects you need to know which chlorophyll is uh, present in which uh, classes that you need to uh, you know correlate are you able to follow are you able to follow guys so this is a major uh, you know you know subdivisions of uh, algae and you see the characteristics of algae you would have you know each class sub classes that are uh, rhodophycy members chlorophycy members phyophycy members they are members they are cellular organization whether they are multicellular or unicellular organization and uh, at the same time uh, what are the food reserves in these three classes at the same time <coughs> for example if you see this uh, major characteristics you will be finding uh, chlorophycy members are commonly called as green algae and they will have chlorophyll a and b right and the food reserve uh, the reserve food materials like or the food materials are reserved in what form so if you see here it is in starch starch form in the chlorophycy members and they will have cell, cell wall which is made up of cellulose right so you need to know these aspects so you can really differentiate between these three classes or divisions within the algae so those are the things you need to focus in this plant Great. Okay. So, are you getting right? 
So plant day, when we talk about plant day, we have uh, cryptogamy, phenerogamy, non-flowering, flowering, and within the flowering, you have again uh, subdivisions, naked seed and covered seeds, gymnosperm, angiosperm, angiosperms, flowering plants, actually they are monocotyledons and dicotyledons are present. So when we talk about, uh, you know, cryptogams, which are, uh, they don't have a proper uh, organ organization, right? They are not separated into root stem and uh, root stem and leaves, right? So they are non-flowering, and again they have uh, they are they are divided into you know they have uh, this uh, you know they are called as thallophytes, and they are again divided into algae, bryophyta, and pteridophyta. So these are all lower plants, pteridophyta. Bryophyta is something which is which has this amphibious character. It means it can live both water and as well as uh, you know moist high moist conditions or and uh, as well as land conditions right so these algae are non embryophytes lack seeds and vascular tissue so they are uh, simply mosses you will be finding so they are all uh, non embryo embryophytes lack seeds and vascular tissue but when it comes to bryophyta these are embryophytes but without vascular tissues Okay, but without vascular tissues. When you see pteridophyta, pteridophyta members are these are embryo embryo bearing plants which form seed and contain vascular tissue. So that's how the organization is taking. That's how evolution is also taking place, right? From the lower plants to the higher plants, right? Is it clear? So right from the lower plants to higher plants, this is how the uh, you know the plant uh, you know the plants are kept evolved so first when we talk about uh, algae uh, within the algae we talked about different uh, you know classification right so let's move to the next aspect <laughs> bryophytes right so so far what we talked about is subdivisions in the algae or classes when we talk about bryophytes, right? Bryophyta members, when you see these bryophyte members, so what exactly they actually, you know, why they are called bryophytes and what makes them bryophytes and what are the different examples of bryophytes and how they reproduce, right? What are the reproduce, repro, uh, repro, uh, repro, uh, reproduction structures also you need to focus, okay? So within these bryophytes, we have liver, uh, liver warts and mosses. Right. So, what are the characteristics of these, uh, you know, uh, you know, these bryophyte members? So, we see these bryophyte members. The characteristics are as follows. So, they are actually simplest as well as primitive group of land plants. They are very simple, right? They don't have a, you know much complex root system etc so they will be having they are primitive group of plant plants right they are also known as amphibians of plant kingdom it means amphibians of plant kingdom it means they live both in a moisture and uh, water condition as well as land condition right so because of their adaptability in both aquatic and terrestrial environments so that's what they are connecting links between algae and pteridophyta so these are the uh, important terms you need to remember. So which are the connecting links between algae and pteridophyta within the plant kingdom? So you need to, right? Uh, you need to pick the option bryophyta, right? And they are autotrophic, and they don't possess seed. Uh, they are non-seeded, cryptogamic plants, right? And if you see this plant body, plant body is of gametophytic in nature, and and maybe differentiated into stem leaves and rhizoids, but very uh, very primitive type of uh, differentiation will be seen. But they don't possess any you know any true vascular tissue like xylem and phloem, right? So what are the sex organs they they do possess is antheridium or archegonium. So antheridium is something uh, a male sex organ. And archegonium, which is a female sex organ. So within this bryophyta, again we have uh, subdivisions, right? They are uh, liverworts, hornworts, or mosses, 
right so they uh, in in this uh, liver warts what are these liver warts actually so this liver warts or plant body which is made up of thallus thalloid so just simple tissue will be there and cells will possess chloroplasts which are pyrenoids so we we have uh, observed uh, different uh, you know storing uh, you know storing cell organelles the food uh, food reserves uh, here uh, the cells will have chloroplasts but without pyrenoids so these are the different characteristics or subdivisions that we have in bryophyta one is liver warts or warts and molls so within the liver warts if you see the plant body is thalloid its cells have chloroplasts but without pyrenoids but when we talk about horn warts right they are plant body is again thalloid and dorsal ventrally flattened so dorsal side and dorsal side and ventral side it is the body is flattened and within this sex organs are embedded within this dorsal ventrally flattened body and if you see this uh, on what the cells bear large chloroplasts without uh, you know uh, a proper uh, pyrenoids just like uh, liver warts and finally comes to the mosses where uh, this uh, this you know this mosses right would contain gametophytes and they are actually thalloid in nature so again they will be having uh, thallus like structures thalloid so what i am discussing is that within this uh, you know uh, uh, bryophyta what are the subdivisions or classes we have right these subdivisions or classes we have is liverworts hornworts and mosses so i am i am trying to put the important characteristics that you need to uh, focus on and each subclasses or each classes or subdivisions you need to uh, you know uh, these characteristics you need to focus at the same time examples of this liver warts horn warts and mosses also you need to be focusing right and if you see the reproduction that occurs in bryophyta is by tubers or advent uh, you know adventitious uh, uh, branches or even uh, you will be finding uh, this reproduction that is through vegetative reproduction by fragmentation right so vegetative reproduction would be taking place in this bryophytes where it might be because of adventitious root branches right or by fragmentation or by tubers also that is vegetative reproduction when it comes to sexual reproduction androids or uh, androids or the sperms right so sperms which actually gametes right which involves in the sexual life cycle so in this bryophyte you will be finding a uh, gametophytic generation as well as sporophytic generation it means first it needs to form gametes once the gametes are formed right they will be fused to form zygote so from then it is sporophytic life cycle so likewise this uh, entire life cycle would takes place both vegetative and sexual reproduction in sexual reproduction we have two phases one is gametophytic and saprophytic uh, sporophytic life cycle and uh, when comes to the next aspect that is pteridophyta right are you able to follow so we are talking about now pteridophyta so pteridophytans right so still we are in uh, you know cryptogams so this pteridophytes or seedless vascular cryptogams so from here only the vascular bundles or vascular tissue you know uh, you know they are started forming but they are very primitive okay so this pteridophytes or seedless vascular cryptogams and they reproduce by means of spores and if you see that they can reach up to 30 to 40 feet height also but the vascular system or the you know uh, the you know the other aspects that the higher plants like angiosperm consists will not be present in this pteridophyta members so what are the general characteristics present in pteridophyta so plant body is differentiated into root stem leaves and if you see this 
the stem may stem may be aerial or underground and is generally herbaceous right so the stem might be either uh, aerially it is uh, aerial uh, type of stem would be there or it will be underground also it will be present the stem pteridophytes and if you see the vascular tissue it consists xylem but without vessels phloem but without companion cells you would have studied you know plant tissues the plant tissues xylem and phloem they are associated with some other uh, you know this uh, tissues right so if you see this phloem is associated with companion cell but that's what i told this vascular tissue is started from here but that's not that's what the primitive type of vascular system and you will be finding anthrojoids a uh, male gametes also will be formed and the reproduction would be both uh, vegetative as well as sexual type right so these are the important general uh, you know general characteristics of pteridophyta members pteridophytes so there were give, uh, uh, you know different examples were given like ferns would be you know if you are would have remembering that evolutionary you know uh, perspective of the plants right in a different uh, you know you know different eras and periods right uh, classification is put forth in the evolutionary perspective you would have observed the ferns also when they dominated uh, when they evolved from what they evolved also they are focused in evolution those graphs are very much important okay so these are the general aspects and important aspects of the pteridophyton members okay so and then last one that what we want to discuss is uh, you know uh, gymnosperms and uh, the last but one so what are the gymnosperms what are the characteristics of gymnosperms and then then we will be talking about angiosperms and their life cycles right that is alternate uh, you know uh, uh, life cycles of alternation of generations right alternation of generations that we can actually focus so let's talk about so so let's talk about uh, uh, you know uh, this gymnosperms so gymnosperms or what are the what type of organisms will be placed in this gymnosperms so in this gymnosperms we will be placing like plants which form the naked seeds right these plants are na uh, they form naked seeds right and which are evolved earlier than flowering plants so if you take the flowering plants angiosperms before flowering plants itself this gymnospermia or gymnosperms are actually evolved right and if you see this where when exactly this gymnospermia or gymnosperms are evolved is during jurassic period right so we have that's what i told animal animal kingdom and plant kingdom and evolutionary tree evolutionary tree of this animal king animals and plants you need to be combining and you should be studying then only you will be really uh, able to connect okay so way uh, when exactly this gymnosperms are evolved is during jurassic period okay so when we talk about general characteristics of this gymnosperm members mostly of they are uh, sporophytic and they can differentiate it into root stem and leaves right and then uh, they they have the root system is well developed and they they possess like uh, tap root system also right and they have some uh, certain symbiotic associations relationships like mycorrhizal associations as well this gymnosperms right and if you see this gymnosperms you would have been observed uh, different sites like uh, you know uh you know cycad plants right cycas plants right so if you see the cycas plants right you will be having different types of uh, leafy structures right a few leaves would be foliage type of leaves and few leaves would be scaly leaves 
so foliage leaves or green simple needle shaped so they will be like needle shaped right and then scaly leaves are minute and uh, they will be minute so if you if you would have observed any cycas plants that right, you would have got that you uh, know this type of uh, uh, you know leafy structures uh, different structures of the leaf right so you have pinus you have uh, different example if you take pinus or cycas right the coconut you know uh, uh, species right so you will be finding this type of uh, arrangement of the leaves and you will be finding even megasporangium and mic uh, microsporangium in this uh, when we talk about uh, sexual reproduction uh, you know megasporangium and microsporangium in the sense like how these male and female gametes are formed and then they are fused and then they are forming zygote and then they will be developing to embryo and then again a plant so likewise uh, here uh, we have to focus on the life cycles of the cycas and pinus as well so more or less they will be similar when it comes to the uh, this uh, you know representation of life cycles so it means the gametogenesis will should occur first and then fusion and then meiosis and then uh, meiosis and then fusion and then they form embryos right so these are the important aspects you need to cover exactly uh, especially the examples which uh, which uh, which are given in ncert you need to be covering and then later uh, the next part is and the final part of this lesson would be the pteridophyta uh, pteridophyta uh, sorry uh, angiosperms right so we talked about pteridophyta and gymnosperms and now we are talking about angiosperms so this angiosperms are uh, you know distinct group the very clear group clear cut they are placed in this flowering plants so these are all flowering plants which form covered seeds so this uh, this seeds are covered by different layers and about almost uh, 2 2 uh, 2 lakh 2 lakh species are present within this angiosperms itself and if you see this angiosperms are most successful group in the, in the plant and now it now they are dominating species and when they actually evolved on when they started evolving on when they started uh, about when they rose right when they rose like uh, during this evolution is the middle of middle of the cretaceous period i told now plant kingdom animal kingdom you what you can do is you can take a, uh, a big a4 sheet or uh, big chart also whatever it is so you can put the plant kingdom here and animal kingdom here and middle you can put the evolutionary tree so then uh, i mean the you know uh, different periods and eras and etc so that you can really apply this in a more uh, interesting way right and the general characteristics if you see they are uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the pollen grains and ovules develop in their flowers and the seeds are formed within the fruits as well so that's what now these are flowering plants eventually the flower will form into fruit etc and nutritionally they are mostly autotrophic right but there are some uh, parasitic uh, angiosperms are there which are cascuta right cascuta would have been studied uh, you know in association parasitic association in organisms and population and even in botany also so cascuta at the same time uh, you have uh, insectivorous plants also utricle area insectivorous plants and when we talk about the lifetime or life cycles they have they display annual biennial perennial type of the you know type of uh, uh, what do you say uh, life cycles as well <clears throat> right so how i uh, i think you are you guys are following right uh, yeah so in this uh, angiosperms you will be finding this alternate alternation of uh, generations right so if you see this you will be finding gametophytic generation as well as sporophytic generation so 
sporophytic generation would form this microspore mother cells or megaspore mother cells. I mean, this megaspore angio and microspore angio would form this microspore mother cells and uh, megaspore mother cells, and eventually they would be transferred and they will be fused, right? So when they fuse, they form zygote and then egg, eventually embryo and then sporophyte. So they will be displaying this uh, two generation. One is gametophytic generation, where you will find the development as well as fusion of gametes, and then it leads to the formation of embryo and then whole plant. So that is sporophytic generation. So this type of cycles and generations have to be focused, and because they may directly give this diagram and they may uh, remove some parts and they may ask you to identify which one is that. Okay. So, and then we will be talking about the last aspect of this uh, lesson that is, uh, you know, plants, plant life cycles and alternation of generations. So, we have different types of, uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, individuals, uh, they'll show different patterns of the life cycles. What are the different patterns? One pattern is uh, haplontic, another, another pattern is diplontic, another one is haplodiplontic. So what makes this aplontic, where in aplontic you will be finding only, you know, the, what do you say, uh, you will be finding only gametophytic, uh, you know, uh, what do you say, uh, in haplontic, right, what exactly this haplontic is that only this uh, sporophytic generation is represented only by one cell zygote. So. That's how within this sporophytic generation and gametophytic generation, this sporophytic generation is represented only by one cell zygote. So therefore, there is no free living sporophytes. So uh, these, these, these sporophytes eventually undergo meiosis to form again haploids, right? So this haploid spores which divide mitotically and forms gametophytes. So likewise, what happens is this uh, the dominant photosynthetic phase in such plants is is the free living gametophyte. So within this uh, sporophyte and gametophyte, only one uh, one uh, one of the type or one of the uh, life cycle is actually dominating. What life cycle is dominating is haploid life cycle is dominating haploid. That's why this kind of life cycle we call it as haplontic, right? For example, if you see Wallbox or uh, Chlamydomonas, uh, species of Chlamydomonas presents this pattern. So that in this way, you have three different patterns in which haplontic, where the haploid, uh, uh, you know, haploid phase, you know, haploid phase is dominant, and uh, diplontic is a diploid uh, uh, phase. Especially the sporophytic is a dominant phase. As simple as it, you have sporophytic diploid, gametophytic haploid. If the gametophytic uh, uh, phase is uh, dominant, it is haplontic. If the diploid uh, sporophytic phase is dominant, it is it is nothing but uh, uh, what is a uh, diplontic uh, or yeah diplontic. If the sporophytic uh, phase is dominant. That is diplontic. If both the phases are dominant or equally sharing, then they are haplodiplontic. So, especially this haplodiplontic type of life cycle patterns you will be seeing in bryophytes and pteridophytes. Right? So, with this, we completed this plant kingdom lesson, uh, uh, especially in with respect to NCRT. Okay? So, I hope you followed this lesson. Yeah, I think it will be useful. There is a power cut. Yeah. So once, uh, just a second. Yeah. Yeah, there's a power cut. <laughs> Fine. So with this, uh, we completed this uh, now lesson, Plant Kingdom. So how do we approach? We need to know the general characteristics and important features and their uh, 
you know habitat and their examples reproductive structures gametes their names and terminology and processes also important this is how we have to uh, learn this plant kingdom so this is a quick outline so so i didn't go in depth but uh, with this lesson is already completed in your 11th standard so you please go through whether you are a board uh, whatever board is whether metric or cbsc the uh, the concepts would remain the same if you talk about this life cycles haplontic diplontic and haplodiplontic so simple strategy that is which phase is dominant sporophyte always uh, deployed and gametophyte always haploid so which phase is dominant over this plants and what are the examples for example column a they will be given giving haplontic diplontic and haplodiplontic in column b they will be giving uh, uh, you know bryophytes pteridophytes angiosperms like this so you need to match appropriately so let's move to the next lesson is it clear guys <sighs> So is it clear? So next lesson we will be talking about uh, you know chapter sixteen, right? <coughs> Digestion and absorption. Right? That is chapter sixteen. Right, chapter sixteen. So what is it about? Uh, so we have less time actually. So I'll quickly go through the important contents. So it's very small lesson actually, digestion absorption. So what exactly we can uh, cover in this lesson? We'll try to see. So in in this uh, digestion absorption, uh, you know the. Uh, if you see this diagrams especially this uh, transfer section of the gut is important where uh, you have got uh, outer to inner inner to outer layers you need to remember so inner lumen is there and then you have mucosa submucosa and then you have uh, muscularis and serosa from inside to outside and outside to inside so these are the important aspects so i'll quickly cover what are the important aspects that you need to cover in this lesson so especially the you know the layers present within this uh, elementary canal or gut the cross section which were given in your uh, NCRT textbook so right from the outer layer that is serosa to inner uh, lumen you need to know this entire order also and each layer has got its functions and uh, different uh, enzymes are associated with it and those things you need to much focus on and if you see this, uh, sphincters are important. Uh, we have got uh, esophageal uh, sphincter. We have got, uh, I know, we have got uh, sphincter at the uh, no, you know, different uh, sphincters, which actually prevents the back backflow of this, uh, you know, digestive juices, right? So those sphincters you need to remember, right? So esophageal sphincter and at the sphincter at the duodenum, you need to. Uh, uh, remember those aspects right uh, so, yeah so what are the other uh, important aspects is that cross section of intestinal mucosa where they show this uh, microvilli and uh, lac uh, lacteal cells right so those aspects the functions of this villi Willy or villi at the same time this lacteals uh, what is the function of this lacteals how they absorb uh, this uh, oil components right at the same time uh, what are the different uh, you know glands that are associated with this mucosal membranes that also very much important so these are the uh, important aspects that you need to cover when it comes to anatomical aspects so this entire uh, animal physiology or plant uh, especially animal physiology we can subdivide it into two aspects one is anatomical aspects structural aspects and then functional aspects for example if i have to talk about gobi right i have to talk about gobi chitpal i have to should talk about the streets what are the different temples we have and different shops we have later we will be talking about what kind of functionality they have so first we need to identify the map root map of this organs and organ systems Right, when we talk about one one organ system, digestive system, first we need to know the root map of it. Right, so it means its structure. 
in structural components and then later we will be talking about functional aspects so structural aspects the anatomy or the cross section of the uh, elementary canal at the same time uh, this microvilli microvilli as well as uh, you will be uh, you will be dental formulas also important so dental formulas across different animals also you need to focus right So, uh, what else we can? So, if you see this, uh, you know, uh, you need to even anatomical aspects. That's what I'm saying. What are the different parts of the digestive system and their functions? That is self self ex explanatory, right? And then sphincters are. Uh, I told you, sphincters are very much important. That uh, that that plays a major role. The terms and the sphincters are very much important. And the what type of teeth or tooth we have? The dent. When we talk, when we talk about the dentition and this uh, different type of tooth, that is homodont and heterodont, right? So with a uh, heterodont is uh, example for you know human is example for heterodont heterodont arrangement of dentition, right? And each uh, different type of tooth and uh, across different animals, their uh, you know. Uh, their uh, dental formula would be important so when we talk about the glands right so these diastu glands or diastu glands and their functions and the location is also important where exactly the uh, these are located that you need to focus so uh, what i'm explaining is only the important highlights and uh, how to approach this lesson only i'm explaining i'm not giving a complete picture of the lesson so please do understand that giving just an outline in the sense like even um, just an important aspect that you need to cover so when you talk about this uh, you know glands you need to know about uh, you know which is the largest gland and what are its functions right uh, at the same time uh, uh, you know uh, salivary glands and their location right and their functions also you need to focus right so we talk about digestive glands, and then we have uh, digestion of food. When we talk about digestion of food, right? So we have to remember or practice the enzymes and their associated enzymatic reactions. So how these proteins are actually by which uh, or substances actually or enzymes does these proteins, peptones or proteases are converted into dipeptides like trypsin or uh, trimethyltryptan or carboxyl. Carbox, uh, carboxypeptidases. So these enzymes and their uh, substrates and the products are important. So these digestive enzymes are utmost important. So they, you may get uh, confused also, so you should be carefully reading this, right? And how do we absorb? And when we have a we have a certain tables were given in NCERT as well. So when we talk about absorption, what in which, what part of this digestive system, what substances they they do actually absorb? So these are all the potential questions for uh, uh, you know correct or incorrect statements or call me a call me type of questions. And finally, we talk about uh, when we talk about the disorders. What are the different types of disorders and uh, what where exact how exactly we can uh, counteract these disorders? or uh, uh, what are the sources and what are the uh, causes for these disorders and their examples are important so this is very small chapter that you can that you have to focus on these areas especially the dental formula dies to glands right and uh, you have gastric glands right this uh, oxygenic uh, cells and uh, you have mucus cells and endocrine cells Right? What are this? What are those functions? What are where they exactly located? And intestinal glands, right? Where exactly, you know, what are the roles of the? What are the role of these intestinal glands you find, right? And digest to enzymes you need to focus, right? So these are the different aspects you can really cover in this lesson. Okay, more than this, uh, nothing much. You can uh, go ahead with uh, within this lesson. So I hope you understand this. What how to approach this lesson? Okay. So right from uh, you know dental dental formulas, 
right and then uh, you have to talk about this glands which are situated in the you know salivary glands and their function types major is submandibular so these are the types right enzymes associated with it and then finally we will be talking about the parts of the digestive tract and uh, different layers and a cross section of uh, elementary canal or gut and their layers right from outside to inside outer layer to inner lumen or lumen to serosa so these are the important aspects and uh, when we talk about uh, you know stomach different parts of the stomach and their layers and their associated digestive glands so for example hcl is produced by which which cells so these sort of things you need to focus okay so with this we we we, we will end end this session we we'll try to read this uh, chapters in this uh, approach i hope you you uh, uh, i mean you got some idea how to approach this lesson okay actually i planned uh, you know animation also but uh, because of different uh, issues i i couldn't uh, you know move forward anyways we'll see you in the next session please do uh, prepare in this way any doubts no right so let's end the end this session and please do uh, prepare well for the uh, prepare well for uh, these chapters thank you stay home stay safe thank you